everyone. Welcome to My Porch Prince. I'm Stephanie. And I'm Kira. And today we have a special video for you. We've joined up with the very talented Rach and Bella Crafts. They are doing a collaboration with several amazing YouTube crafters to bring you junk journal tips, tricks, and hacks. So you'll find more information about all the participating videos as well as the hashtag and links in the video description below. So be sure to scroll down and take a look at those. Okay, so today we are going to be showing you some quick and easy ways to add movement and dimension to your junk journal. Let's begin with six really simple projects, many of which you can do in under a minute. And then we'll finish with two slightly more advanced projects, an accordion fold and a flip. And if you are looking for even more journal ideas that open, pop out, spin, and flip, we've made a playlist of previous video tutorials to help you out. You can find that down in the description box below. All right, let's get started. Okay, so this is Kira and I am going to be kicking off this video by showing you how to do these little uh, 3D pop out butterflies. So how we're going to do this is I just went ahead and cut out a whole bunch of butterflies on the Cricut machine that we have. And I will have a link to these butterfly kits down below if you are interest, uh, interested. And we are just going to be folding these in half and then adding a little bit of glue to that crease that we made and just pressing them down onto the page like this. So it seems really simple and that's because it is, but it's also very effective. Things don't always have to be complicated to make a big statement. So here's the butterfly and what that looks like when you move the page around. Um, but there are two different ways of doing this. So the second way is to print off uh, the exact same butterfly image twice. So I just print off each sheet twice. And then we are going to glue one butterfly down to the page flat. And then the second butterfly, we are going to do the same thing we did before, which is fold it in half, add a good amount of glue, and then glue it right on top of that first image. And that just gives it a little bit more depth and dimension, as you can see here. All right, so here's what it looks like when I have added all of the different butterflies all over the page. I find that this looks really good inside the journal or on the cover. And what's kind of nice about it is even when you close your journal, it doesn't smash the butterflies down. So they will still actually have some pop up to them, um, even if you close your journal. So, all right, I hope you got some inspiration from this project. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Stephanie. So this project is a really quick and easy way to add some movement to your journal. We're going to do a simple waterfall flip. And what I have here are some printed old photographs. These are from our um, sewing faded photos. I'll put links down below to this. And then um, you could also use washi tape. I've got some vintage washi tape, but today I think I'm going to be using these faux hardware pieces. Um, these are some fussy cuts also in our Etsy shop and I printed them on sticker paper and I did what's called a kiss cut. So you can remove the stickers just like you would, you know, store-bought stickers. And um, how I did that was I set my Cricut to sticky note, to the sticky note setting, and I used vinyl sticker paper. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. So I've got just four faded photos here. And what we're gonna do is just line these up cascade style, just like this. And we're gonna leave a little room at the top for our hinge or our tape or whatever it is you're using. And once they look kind of like we want, we'll go ahead and stick them down. All right, and I'm just gonna choose a couple of these hinge style stickers. And, oh, it's not quite perfect, is it? But it'll have to do. It's a little straighter. All right, and then once you have it stuck down, we're gonna flip it up and crease it. And we'll do the same for the next piece. Okay, and so it's just a nice little way to add some movement and interest to your journal. And I went ahead and printed some striped or lined papers on the back of this, and I'll put links to those down below as well. So that gives you a little bit of journaling space. So there you go, easy peasy. 
All right, I am going to be showing you how to use foam tape, which is this tape here, to uh, make images sort of pop off of pages. So this is gonna be another quick and simple tutorial. So to start, I went ahead and took these two pages from our Books and Wildflower kit. And it's actually the same page, but one is printed on cardstock and the other one is printed on regular paper. So how we want to do this is we are going to take the paper page and I'm going to just be adding it to my journal like this, just kind of sliding it into the center signature here. And then taking that cardstock page, I'm going to cut out two of the images and we are just going to be taking a little bit of that um, double-sided foam tape and I'm going to be cutting off just a few small pieces from it and adding that to the back of the images. All right, so just sticking them on here and pressing it down like this. And then for the second image, if you want to, you can actually double up the tape like this. So using two pieces or three pieces on top of each other, and that will give you even more dimension. So it's kind of like whatever you want for your journal, however much dimension you want. And it just kind of creates like a nice little pop-up effect like this. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Okay, for this one, we're going to go ahead and make a couple of little um, brad fastener swivel images. And this is just, again, to add a little movement to your journal. So I have these little um, brad fasteners. And then I've got a couple of faded photos. You can use any ephemera pieces that you want. And then I also have these little um, like envelope and letter pieces, and these are going to be hidden behind our photos. So to do this, I'm just going to punch a hole in the corner of my faded photo and then I'm going to place my brad in here and that's how it's going to look but before I do that I want to go ahead and mark on my page where this is going to go so I can punch another hole in my page and keep in mind that on the other side of this page the brads will show up so you may need to cover them with something or you know whatever you want to do to hide those and I'm going to go ahead and Mark that right here. And I'm gonna do the same for this photo. Little hole in the corner. There we go. Just like that. And now we've got some pieces that will swivel. And what we're gonna do is hide these little pieces behind here for a fun little surprise. Okay, so now you've got your little swivel images that move aside to show these hidden note cards underneath. All right, so for this next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do this little pop-out sunflower card. You might have seen something similar in our uh, Just Journal January Journal Prompts video. So for this, I'm going to need a card. This one comes from our Apple Picking Journal Kit, and I printed this paper on the back of it from the uh, same kit, and then I also printed that out front and back on a piece of cardstock. So it's important that these two match. All right, so taking the sunflower, this is a freebie in our Facebook group, so make sure you join our Facebook group for that if you want. And we are going to be folding that flower in half and setting it aside, and then taking our uh, piece of cardstock that we printed out on, we are going to be cutting out a piece of uh, paper that is four inches by one inches. And we're going to be cutting out two of those, and we are going to be taking those strips and folding them in half and folding them in half again. And that will give us even one inch sections to make a little square like this. 
All right, so now that you have two of those, we can go ahead and assemble them. So I'm going to take some tape here and they should be perfectly even matching. If not, you might need to measure and cut them out again. But taking some tape, we are going to be adding it to one end of the uh, strip that we folded here like this on the inside and then just folding the piece of paper around like this to match up the ends and the tape should hold it from the inside. And I like to add another piece of tape to the outside of that as well, just to make sure that it is strong and it's going to hold. All right, so just like that. And now that we have these two pieces, uh, we can go ahead and glue them together. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue to one side of our little cube here and then go ahead and glue this second piece to it like this. And then we are going to hold that for just a second until it sticks and then set it aside to dry. All right, and once it's dry, it should be able to fold like this. And mine were not absolutely perfect, so they're just a little bit off. It's okay, it won't make a huge difference. All right, so next thing that we're going to do is take our flower and we are going to be gluing it down to the inside of this little stand that we made. So just lining up the crease of the flower with the very center uh, crease of our stand, I'm just going to glue those two pieces together like this. Just making sure everything is lined up like this. I'm trying to get it about in the center of the flower here. And then I'm just going to sort of squeeze that down and hold until it dries. And when it dries, it should sort of work like this. Okay, and next we can glue it into our card. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the bottom of the stand like this. And then I'm going to add the folded portion, uh, like right in the center crease of our card here, just like this. So, then I'm going to fold it in kind of like a 90 degree angle here and just prop it up with a little um, a little shelf that I had, like this little, what do you call this thing? Drawer! I'm gonna prop it up with a little drawer and just let it dry until it is solid like this. And now you should have a little pop-up card that you can just open like so. And there you go, kind of a cute, fun little pop-up. All right, so next we're gonna be making an easy envelope flip. And this is a really quick and easy way to add movement to your journal. Um, you just get an envelope. This is a craft envelope, um, but you could get, you know, one from a printable kit or, you know, whatever you have lying around. And I've also got some ephemera here from our um, shabby pink ephemera pack. And what we're gonna do is just decorate our envelope and then we're going to attach it to our page to create a quick flip. All right, and that's just a really quick way to add a little flip to your page, a little movement. And if you wanted to, you could use this flap as a pocket, but I just went ahead and covered it with a piece of ephemera. There you go. All right, for my final project today, I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple flip that has 11 different uh, sheets for writing, like 11 different spaces for writing. So I'm gonna take this paper that I printed from the Forgotten Diary Journal Kit, and I printed the same paper front and back, kind of sort of an, a, like a neutral base paper. And we are just going to be folding it in half the long way, creating a crease like this. And then we are going to use that crease as a guide to cut this piece of paper in half. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And when you're done, you should be left with two equal sheets of paper like this. So setting one of those aside, we are gonna take this first one and we are going to be folding it in half the long way again like this, creasing it nice and well. And then we are going to fold it in half again, the exact same direction trying to line those edges up as close as possible. 
give it a good crease here. And this is going to be the base for the horizontal um, part of our flip. So you should have four equal sections that fold just like that. And we're going to be using this to help us measure our second sheet. So laying it the long way here, um, you could use a ruler for this. I'm going to go ahead and just use my uh, first portion as like a guide all the way down the paper like this. And I'm going to cut off that smaller edge and we are left with a sheet like this. So lining up that first portion at the bottom here, I'm going to fold our longer sheet over that section to create a little crease like this. So now it should be the same size and we should be left with like this smaller edge here. I'm going to just fold that over the first portion like so. Create a crease again like this. All right, and this is going to be our vertical portion for this flip. So just laying that smaller edge behind the second panel of our horizontal portion. Um, and again, before you glue everything down, we want to make sure that we give everything a good crease. So every crease should be folded front and back and smoothed out like this. And then we can go ahead and lay that first, uh, that vertical portion behind the horizontal one. And I'm gonna add some glue to this like shorter piece here. A quick note, if you are using um, Fabri-Tac like we are, it doesn't hold distress ink well, so if you want to distress your edges, make sure you do that before gluing everything together. But if you are skipping that like I am, you can go ahead and glue the vertical portion down to the horizontal one like this, lining up that crease with the top of that first um, horizontal panel. And it should fold over just like this. If you're having trouble, move it around a little bit until it folds over just like this. It should be very easy. All right, smooth that out and let it dry. All right, and now you should have your panels which can fold like this. Should be a pretty smooth fluid motion if you creased all of your creases front and back. And then this panel over here should just fold over both of those sections. If it doesn't, you might need to move your panels around and like recrease them a little bit, but it should be pretty simple. And I had a little bit uh, showing on the edge here, so I'm going to trim that off. But just a reminder, if you trim any off the bottom, be careful or you might end up doing what I did and cut a crease and one of the panels now is cut off from the portion. So um, it's a quick fix. I'm just going to add a little bit of tape. You could sew it or add like a cute little patch or something like that. I'm just going to use basic tape for this tutorial here. All right. And now you should have your flip like this really quick and simple. And it creates a lot of writing space for your journal. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like when decorated. So you might have seen this again if you saw our Just uh, just Journal January Journal Prompts videos. I made this little flip here, decorated it with some cute pictures and some tabs just like this. And it gives you front and back panels to work with. So there's lots and lots of places to put writing or ephemera or pockets or anything like that. It's just kind of a cute little flip here. All right, so that is going to finish up all of my tutorials for today. Thank you so much for crafting with me, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye. Hey guys, okay, so we are going to be making an accordion fold insert for our journal. And to start with, um, you're gonna need a journal page, probably that opens to a center fold. Um, it may work, you know, otherwise, but I think this will make it easier if it's, you know, uh, one solid piece of paper that you're using. And um, the materials that we're gonna be using for this are these mini craft envelopes. They are three and a half by two and a quarter inch. And I'll try to put a link to these below. And then I'm using some of our fussy cut roses. And then these tags are from our Books and Wildflowers kit. And um, I printed these at 80%, their regular size. And that's because they were too big for these envelopes. So I shrunk them down just a little bit. And then we'll be using some other various odds and ends. And then this paper is from our Tender Roses, or, um, Tender Roses printable papers. 
And um, this is the piece that we're going to start with. So I'm gonna scooch this journal aside for a minute. And what you wanna do is take your sheet of paper and you want it to be the same size as your pages in your journal. So it covers the page completely. And what you're gonna do is just fold it in half right along the center, just like that. And then you're gonna fold this piece backward like this. And same thing on this side. Hold this piece backwards. So it's divided into four even sections, just like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach some things to these pages and insert it into our journal. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to take my envelopes and I'd like to have a little um, cut out here so that I can grab my tag easily. So I've got a one inch uh, circle punch and I'm just going to cut out a little divot here. Just like that. I'm gonna repeat that on all of these. All right, and then I'm gonna glue one envelope on each panel. Okay, and once these are down, we're gonna go ahead and decorate them. I've got some little crochet pieces here that I cut to size. I'm gonna glue those on. And next comes our fussy cut roses. All right, and then these little uh, labels are from our faded labels kit. I'm going to use these at the bottom along with a little bit of cheesecloth just for some texture. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and just add our tags. All right, and the last part is adding it to our book pages. And to do that, it's really simple. We're just gonna glue the first and the last panel onto the pages. You just wanna to try to align it the best you can with the page underneath and glue it down. And I don't know where I learned this technique, but I did not make it up. I saw it somewhere a couple years ago and if I could remember, I would give you guys the link. Um, so if you're the person who came up with this, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to steal your idea. I just uh, honestly cannot remember where I saw this. But just so you know, this wasn't my original idea. It's just my take on an idea that I saw a few years ago. Okay. And now when you close your journal page, it just gives it a really cute little movement and kind of a little pop out effect. Okay. Thanks for watching everyone.